Hello everyone. Hope you are all good. Today we are going to discuss a topic which is crowdfunding in commercial real estate. In our value investing series, we had done a couple of topics which is related to real estate investing. So as a part of that, I would like to introduce to you this topic of real estate investing using crowdfunding. So as the word indicates, it's a funding which is actually raised from a group of investors or otherwise called a crowd. So there is a limitation for this. The number of investors should not be more than 200. You can see on my screen the concentration of wealth in our country as far as the various asset classes are concerned. So if you see trillions of dollars of wealth is locked out in physical assets like gold, diamond, silver, real estate, etc. So before getting into the specifics of the crowdfunded real estate, that is the crowdfunded commercial real estate space. I would first like to brief you on what actually a crowdfunding is. So crowdfunding is a way by which you will have a online platform and the funding from the investors for a particular property is raised by this platform. To take an example, if you have a 50 crore property in Navi Mumbai, so that space is to be bought by someone so that he can give it on a lease so that he will get a monthly rental yield. So in that case, what this crowdfunding will do. So, you know, if a single investor can directly go and buy a 50 crore property, it is not that feasible because uh, many a times liquidity plays a problem there. Means a single person may not have that 50 crore. So, what this crowdfunding platform does, they get a lot of investors, a group of investors and collects a particular amount, say 25 lakhs from each of them. And from the 200 investors, they will raise the 50 crore money which is required for investing and buying this property. So that is how a crowdfunding works in a simple term. Now how the model works, what is the actual structure, who all are involved in that and what is the procedure by which the complete process is done and how to invest in this crowdfunded platform will be clearly mentioned in the video going forward. So this commercial real estate investing is these days offered by such fractional investing and that too with highly tech enabled platforms. Strata, property share etc are a few names to stake. So earlier I had explained a video wherein we talked about real estate versus real estate investment trust. Those are the REITs. So how this REIT which is again listed in the stock market which helps you invest in various properties, commercial spaces with ease. And also compared to a traditional commercial real estate where the single property costs very high even if you go for a shop space nowadays if you see in Pune it varies in the range from at least 45 lakhs to 1.5 to 2 crore. So again it is based on the location whether it is prime or remote and the square foot or the area which the property is having such things. Also if you see the rental yield it is very low and how to maintain it, how to manage it all these things are concerns for, for a physical real estate property which is individually managed. Now let's directly get into crowdfunded commercial real estate investing. So a crowdfunded CRE has mainly got four steps. One is invest. So they will be investing in grade A, good property which is done with all the due diligence. Second is earn. So a passive income through a monthly rental is been ensured through this procedure which is the earning part. Third is track. So you can track the portfolio, you can get half yearly reports on what is the valuation of that property, what is the rate at which the nearby properties are getting sold at and what is the area appreciation and all such things. And the fourth thing is sell. In the sense exiting out of the property like selling it out and encashing it and maybe then investing in new property. So invest, earn, track and sell. So that's the simple thing on which the complete CRE platforms are going on. Such tech enabled platforms takes care of end to end solutions. So you see all these four things means it's end to end from buying and to selling that property. Now let's talk about how such platforms or the platform enabled companies choose a property. So there should be a fine balance between rental yield, stability and capital appreciation. So all these things are very clearly important for a commercial real estate space. So these things are duly taken care by such platform owners and they ensure that you get the best property and the best deal and best rental yield and the best appreciation. So the selection process includes the following steps. First is property screening. So based on location, good tier 1 properties etc is screened by such tech enabled platforms. They have got AI support as well. So artificial intelligence enabled platforms help them screen through 
numerous properties, thousands of properties, and they do due diligence to such uh, tech-enabled platforms and arrive at a proper rental property. Second is asset due diligence. So there will be a council, there will be experienced panel, and they will be going through all the factors which is to be considered, legal things, etc. So that they will ensure that the property which has been bought for the investors is not having any legal issues and it is clear of all litigations. Third is tenant research. So once you buy the property, then you will have to give it to a good tenant, most probably a Fortune 500 company. So such companies are stable in their finance. They will give out rent on the timely basis and will not cause any delay and will not have any financial problems so that if there is any issue, then the rental yield will be stopped and it will affect the investors. So such research is also done by this platform. Fourth is financial analysis. Financial analysis in the sense they uh, project the future prospects, future appreciation and what is going to happen in future and how stable the property or the yield and the appreciation will be in that area. Such things are thoroughly studied, then only the investment is done. Now how to invest? So property, once all these due diligence and all the procedures are done and once it is selected, then the same is listed on the online platform which is provided by this tech enabled platforms. So in that you can see a property, its uh, value like uh, it can vary from 10 crore to uh, 60, 65 crore as well as of now currently as I speak. So a single property cost I am speaking of and they will tell the returns which is the rental yield. So how much is the expected rental yield then what is the expected uh, returns inclusive of the rental yield plus the property appreciation all these percentages will be mentioned in the online platform. We will get the details about that percentages and how realistic it is in, in the subsequent session after this. So the investor can apply online they can book the property which they liked uh, with a 10% advance. So it is again online payment you have to do. Then after that, once the property is fully subscribed, then you will have to pay the complete amount. And normally this amount is not less than 25 lakhs. So 25 lakhs is the lot size. And some companies, if you negotiate with the senior personnel, they will allow some discount in the sense, not discount. So 25 lakhs can be made to 20 lakhs and such investments can be done but only that 5 lakh portion is cut out and only that portion of the property only is allocated on your name. So instead of say 15,000 you will get 12,000 because you are not paying 25 lakhs you are paying just 20 lakhs. And also if the property is not subscribed in say 60 to 90 days then this platforms also return your money back with proper bank interest rate. And as far as the subscription is concerned, you can see a tab on the platform wherein you can see 10%, 20%, 30%, 100% like that. How much is the subscription level also you can clearly see on the platform so that you can identify the subscription status. Once the property is completely subscribed, then once they get the entire money, normally within 21 days, you start getting the rental income. And the rental income normally comes not late than 15th of every month. Now let us get into the ownership structure. So this is very important in a platform like this. So it is also important for you to understand each and every component in this and how this entire cycle works. So on my screen, you can see the structure of the entire thing. So uh, my handwriting is not that good. So please bear with that. So I have done a sketch on my notepad and it has been projected on the screen. So once the money is completely obtained, then a special purpose vehicle SPV is formed which will form a private limited company say Bijoy private limited company that would be the name for the particular property whose investments are collected from 200 investors each with 25 or multiples of 25 lakhs or in some cases 20 lakhs and then it is registered under a name Bijoy private limited company. So that is the company which is now owning the particular property and you are you and me are each of the investors holding shares or stakes in that company. So it's an asset holding company. Now the CRE online tech enable platform manages as we told manages end to end. So once this SPV is found by them then they will have an escrow account. So an escrow agent or trustee is somebody who manages the fund flow within the complete system. Fund in the sense cash. 
so as you see on the screen there will be an agreement escrow agreement between the seller and the spv the newly formed private limited company so seller in the sense the property is there say navi mumbai property it is currently owned by someone else now we have to buy from them with this 25 lakhs each of investors and that 50 crore property is brought from the seller and bijoy private limited company which is the example we have taken here so that private limited company buys from the seller with an escrow agreement and this escrow partner or trustee is somebody who monitors or who manages the fund flow and there will be a bank banker as well so say this escrow partner can be icici and say this bank can be hdfc bank the escrow agreement which is formed between the seller and the spv is that for 50 crore the property is been sold by the seller to the spv which is the private limited company the money which is collected from the investors is put into the bank and escrow agent monitors that account and the fund flow and once the seller is ready then the money which is 50 crore is transferred from the bank account to the seller's account now the deal is done now the property is registered in the name of the private limited company which is the spv now this agreement this registration everything is taken care by the escrow agent or the trustee with the help of the cre platform who is the main company now the cre platform say strata finds out a proper good tenant and that tenant probably will be an existing tenant or a new tenant majority of the properties are pre leased only so they will already have a tenant which is a fortune 500 or good tier a tenant then an agreement is formed by the spv private limited company with the tenant for a particular rental income so say uh, 8% yield or whatever percent the yield be so they will also form a lease period say for 5 years and also there will be an agreement wherein the tenant has to give the entire one year rent as a security deposit and also the tenant has to inform the platform one year prior before if they wish to opt out or give away with the rental property so that if they have one year horizon then within 6 months the platforms are able to find out new tenant and then rent it out so for that particular 6 months also as they are having a intimation period the rental yield will not be stopped and the new tenant while coming in will give the new rent also so maybe one two months only will be the period wherein the investor has to suffer a cut in rental yield again the tenant pays the amount it goes through escrow trustee monitoring to the bank account and from the bank account it is given to the investor account now the cre platforms normally tells that the holding period is normally 5 to 7 years so even it can be 3 years as well considering the current boom in the real estate industry especially in commercial space so after that period then they will find a buyer suitable buyer and sell it at a appropriate price so if they get a good appreciation then only they will sell it and there will be agms annual general meeting uh, conducted by the cre platforms with all the investors and trustee then if the investors vote is more than 75% for selling a property then the call is taken and the property is sold out so that is how it works another interesting thing in this uh, cre online platform is the investors dashboard so you will have a colorful investor dashboard whether it is in app or in your website so desktop version so you will get to know all the particular transactions you have done which all property you are holding what is the document status what is the uh, appreciation etc so there you can view the assets you can see your tds certificates track your rental payouts and also the spv cash flows so you will also receive your properties half yearly valuation reports like currently it is 50 crore then after a year say it has appreciated to 53 crore or 52 crore whatever it may be so that report is thoroughly done by this platform and it is been uploaded in the dashboard investors dashboard and you can download the pdf and you can read and understand your appreciation of the property also the properties tax receipts insurance documents etc can be seen on the platform obviously the property is insured so if in case of fire or any miss happening you will get back the money you will also get the cre market data so current what is the valuation what is the market trend what is the rate appreciation and other things also you will get as reports in the dashboard so i was talking about the tech enabled platforms so in case of strata which is one of the leading uh, commercial real estate crowd funded platform is supported by the technology partner named propstack strata is handling more than 800 crore uh, assets as of now 
so they have started since last 3 years though they are new to the industry they are doing good in their business as i told commercial real estate platform is offering asset management services so that includes asset purchase asset management and investor services so these all things are already mentioned in the earlier session of this video so i will not repeat it another thing which is important here is the liquidity option so if you are in need of the money and if you feel that the property is completely appreciated then you need to exit the property so which is very important in a physical property like commercial real estate so this tech platform helps does this in three ways one is asset sale like you can hold it for long say 5 to 7 years or even 3 years and after that you can sell the property you can put it on the online platform wherein the uh, investment manager which is allocated to you in the platform you can call them and they will help you resell the property through to the resale section in the dashboard in the app and also there will be people in the waiting list for the same property so once you exit the property the waiting list guy can enter the property the other option is private transaction so you can call the investment agent the investment manager and they will help you do a private transaction as well like you identified a person whom you know so he wants to take the stake of the portion which you are having in the property then you can tell them and he can register in the platform and the investment manager will help you transfer the property from your name to the his name and he can pay off and you can get the cash and direct asset sale is the waiting list option and the third is the resale platform as i already told resale platform is there is some session in the dashboard wherein you can put the property for resale and if people are interested they can click on it and the new investors can buy the property and you can get it cashed out now the main thing rental yield how much do you get from such platforms actually the rental yield is based on what is the location what is the property and what is the valuation etc normally these platforms are offering rental yield as high as 9 to 9.5% as quoted on the app but realistically if you see this 9 to 9.5% 1% is the management fee so they are managing the property they are doing all this due diligence and they are uh, managing end to end uh, things in this uh, deal so also they are managing the rental uh, payouts from the tenant to you through the escrow account and banking etc so they need to be paid out and there are employees working for them to make the success so one percent is paid out for them so effectively nine nine and a half percent means it's eight eight and a half percent cutting off the one percent now if you see these platforms are giving a one percent extra yield for the first year for promoting the investors basically they are not taking the management fee so that is why they are giving that one percent off so in such a case if you take out that one percent also because from second year you will not have that one percent discount and they will be taking their management fees of one percent then the percentage becomes from nine nine and a half we have got eight eight and a half then that eight eight and a half becomes seven to seven and a half so realistically you will be getting seven to seven and a half percent yield from the second year so that's what the actual figure which you are going to get out of which you will have a tds also so tds will be cut based on your tax lab but again you can claim that tax benefit at the end of the payout because these platforms are cutting the tds at the source itself and then giving it out to you but say if you are working and your wife is not working and she is a housewife then you can do the investment on her name and as she is not having any income or lower income you can claim back the tax by uh, submitting the tds certificates while filing the tax return so effectively you are getting it back so i will not consider that percentage or reduction in the rental yield so that's up to your intelligence how you manage that tds part so now there is also a increase in rental yield as well so it can be year on year say five percent every year on year otherwise it will be a standard 15 percent after three years this 15 percent hike after three years is very standard in the commercial real estate space so that is what is currently prevailing in many of the properties which is offered through these platforms so that percentage after three years you will get a higher rental yield so this will help you justify the investments you have done in the property it is also to be noted that whatever rental yield you are getting which they are claiming is inclusive of the interest rate offered by the bank on the security deposit which is huge like the rent for the complete one year is put as deposit normally in such cases so such deposits gets good fd rates so that is also becoming the part of the rental yield and uh, basically based on the real figures the percentage can vary higher or even slightly lower so based on that you get the total rental yield lock in period agm meetings everything we have already discussed so we will not elaborate on that 
now getting into the taxation so taxation already i told tds cut off at the source itself now how the share is split the whatever investment you have done say 25 lakhs out of which 10% is in the form of equity shares and rest 90% is in the form of compulsorily convertible debentures ccd so these ccds are nothing but bonds which is having a coupon rate so this ccds are mainly the rental yield for you like the coupon rate is nothing but the interest rate which is paid out to you which is the rental income for you so whatever 15000 60000 you are telling on the 25 lakh property is the ccd coupon rates given out to you through the bank so ccds are compulsorily convertible debentures in the sense this has to be converted into equity shares after a particular lock in period or after a particular period which has been defined or else upon a event like if you are selling the property so while selling the property you have to convert the ccd into equity shares so as i told before every 15th you will get out the rental payout with cutting of the tds at source itself tds actually will be 10% so 10% tds will be cut at source by the uh, cre platform and that is what you can claim it back at the end of the year while you are claiming the tax returns now if you are selling the property within 24 months which is 2 years then you will be applicable for short term capital gain tax and that tax will be based on your actual tax lab and if you are selling the property after 2 years you will be cutting off your short term capital gain tax and you will be eligible for long term capital gain tax so this will be taxed at flat 10% but without indexation benefits earlier it used to be 20% with indexation benefits now as per the new scheme it is 10% without any indexation benefits indexation benefits in the sense it will not be considered any inflation uh, percentages over the years and directly it will be taxed at 10% of whatever profit you are getting now risk analysis is something which you have to do for every commercial real estate property because these are very large properties and any litigation or any risk can bust off the entire cash which is very huge to bear so mainly it is only tenancy risk in this so tenancy risk is mitigated because they are doing a due diligence they are going for good or fortune 500 companies which are able to pay out the rent and will not go bankrupt because they are having strong financials so that particular risk is completely mitigated in this case other things like liquidity risk etc is already discussed so they are not risk so as i always say it is only risky if you don't know about in and out from end to end about the investing if you know everything then the risk is completely mitigated dashboard will have all the soft copies as i mentioned of all the agreements and documents and the originals will be with the custodians so concluding as in my earlier video real estate investment trust reits are new to india or was new to india 4 years back now they are gaining pace now they are currently three listed reits in the stock market similarly this crowd funded real estate is also gaining pace in india then new investors are getting in it's not just hnis who are participating in this average investors like us if you have 20 25 lakhs investment upfront investment because you, here you cannot take any loan because if you take a loan the loan will be at least 9% and what you are getting here is 7% so it is not justified so you need to have some liquid cash maybe something which you have sold out from your stocks from bonds or some uh, bonuses you got etc so you have to get that money and once you get that money you can invest in such a platform and this is something which is worth investing especially the reits are safer bets than this uh, crowd funded real estate because reit is having a diversification and uh, here the commercial real estate spaces which is a single property in which you are investing has is having concentration risk means everything is invested in a single property unlike a diversification in case of reits but still the returns are also higher here because reits will be having 10% invested in under construction properties were in here it is directly invested in pre lease properties so rental income comes from the first month itself and the cash flow is maintained every month unlike quarterly payouts in case of reits and reits returns are also 6 to 6.5% or maximum 6.7% in case of embassy reits these days but here you will get 7 plus 7.5 in case of uh, prime properties you can get 8% also so considering the slightly higher risk and considering the higher risk reward you can definitely consider investing in crowd funded real estate platforms wherein you will ensure that you are having a good diversification in the real estate sector along with obviously our stocks bonds and golds and other investments which are currently holding 
in the next video i will be clearly mentioning the difference between reits and crowd funded real estate commercial real estate platforms and what are the disadvantages and advantages of this i will be clearly mentioning the differences between the both and you will get further more clarity on this subject if you have any doubts you can definitely ping me in the comment box because uh, this is relatively new investment which i am introducing in our channel so i suggest everyone to come up with your comments or questions in, if any i will try to answer each and every one of them see you in next video till then happy investing